Today on Core Conversations, we had Dana Santi. Dana comes from a family of entrepreneurs, and that influence is seen in her fantastic business acumen that she brings to the Pilates world. Our conversation was a business course, a parenting course, a self help course, and a Pilates course all at the same time. We're both raising teenage boys, and we drew connections between helping them find their way in the world and our clients finding their way in their fitness journey. Dana was pretty transparent about her challenges in her business career, some hard decisions that we have to make as leaders, and how studio ownership isn't as sexy as we think it is. With all that said, she also explained the origins and intents of Flotties, with it being designed by a man for men. And she shared some words of wisdom for our listeners that can massively change the way that we look at our Pilates practice. Enjoy the conversation. Go ahead. My name is Dana Santi, and mm-hmm. I own a Pilates studio called Dana Santi Pilates, formerly the Pilates Corps. My tax ID number is. No, <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes. And I opened, um, I opened my studio in February of 2002. Oh, wow. So, yeah. yeah. So it's been, a, um, it's been a good run so far. Yeah. Were you in the fitness industry before that, too? Like, were you doing other things as well? Or? So I was just doing Pilates, right? Okay. I, you know, when I was um, in my late teens, right? I, I, you know, I watched Oprah one time and I, Maya Angelou was on and I remember hearing her say, you know, when you're a young kid, if you pay attention, right, you know yes. what you're going to do in life. Yes. Right. And I, at that moment, and I said, well, oh, gosh, she's so right. I always knew somehow I was going to be paid to exercise. I just, I just knew it. I just didn't know what the exercise was um it it you know i i tried all different things they'd ask me to teach i'd be like you know i can't step on that thing and breathe at the same time then do (laughs) you know a turn and keep you know i that i'm not interested but thank you and then um uh then in 1996 i um right but my mom had had a dance school so the ballet teacher there said have you there's two Pilates, um, there's this Pilates studio on Rush Street, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I said, you know, I've heard of it. And she said, you should try it. And um, at that time, though, there was a studio on Rush Street. And then there was the Pilates studio, uh, Ramana and Sean's training center. Yes. Um, and it, I thought, you know, why wouldn't you go this the one on Rush Street was what we would have called that, um, like the Santa Fe method back in the day, right? Okay. And uh, like the Physical Mind um, Institute. And then the one in Evanston was um, Ramana. And so I thought, why wouldn't you go to the source? To the source, you know? right. And, um, and she, and I, you know, I didn't know much at all. And she goes, well, Rush Street, it's so much easier. And, and, um, and so I just started going to, to Evanston and, mm-hmm. and taking lessons. And once I started, I, you know, I just didn't, I just didn't stop. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so that was in like the mid nineties. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And uh, that, uh, I always say the young people, you know, they're trying to figure out what they want to do with their lives. And I, in my house right now, my 17 year old, you know, just finishing school in this weird sense, like we're all, we're struggling with what that looks like. Yeah. Uh, but there's a sense of, you know, asking yourself not, you know, what do you want to do when you grow up, but who do you want to become? Right. Exactly. And if you pay attention, right, to that 17 year old and go, you know, I know my son should not probably be sitting behind a desk. And if he is behind a desk, then it better be creating video games, right, or something fast moving. But, um, I, I can't, I have to look at that and not force him to go to school to become something that is going to make him sit behind a desk, you yes. know? And, and so I think when you, when you just listen to them um, and you got to listen hard because this generation of kids is um, communicating in a form that I, I, you know, 
if I wasn't their mom, I would never believe it, right? Right, and you wouldn't think that's actually a valid way of communicating. It's perfectly fine to FaceTime somebody and put the phone down and walk away and do something go else. to yeah. the bathroom and then come back to it and they're still there and, right. and you know so it's not help this situation we're in now is not helping but it's but it's it's happening so now yes. what are we going to do as a society right to mm -hmm. embrace that and work with it because it's not going to change you know it's not not but like, you're 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 also talking like a higher level concept of really just listening to ourselves, right? Like yeah. if you have been aware of listening to yourself from that age to know that you're going to be doing something physical or whatever, right. by the time we get to this age, yeah. we have a real keen sense of when we're, when we are talking to ourselves. Yes. And it's going with your, it's trusting your gut, right? Yes. It really, it's, I want to say it's simple. That's not simple. I think that takes mm -hmm. balls to do. And right. um, I think you either are that type of person or you're not, you know, it's yes. nothing against anything. No, it, no. Right. Um, I think you just, you have that awareness or you don't, or um, I don't know, maybe you learn it as a kid and you don't realize it, um, you yeah. know, either way. And well, I'm, I'm actually taking a step before that. Like, I mean, before you trust anything, you have to know that what you're listening to. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, um, but it has to be something you want to trust at the same time. Right. Yes. It's, right. You know, um, go with your gut and you, you know, it, it kind of comes full circle, but, uh, mm -hmm. but it's fascinating. And so I always just listen, listen to your kids, listen yes. to them, you know, and it may not be, you know, a sentence a day, but, you know, <laughs> listen to them. That's man, yeah, yeah, boys. Yeah. Right. One of the, the, he just yeah. asked me the other day where the, where the plates are. And he goes, I should know this, shouldn't I? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yes. The, the best line uh, from my social work days, one of the best lines that I got, like, we're totally on this, like, parenting tangent right now, which is fine. Um, one of the lines that someone gave me when it comes to boys is that boys talk shoulder to shoulder and girls talk face to face. Yes. So the conversations I would have of my son, for example, would be like, let's say we're going out to eat at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't choose a restaurant that's two minutes away because if you go two minutes away, sit down in the restaurant. So how was your yeah. day? Good. what did you do? Yeah. Nothing. How was school? Fine. Yeah. But if I find a restaurant that's 25 minutes away, dad, you should have seen this thing. I had this guy in a basketball yeah. court. We did this. Da, 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 da. The conversation is solid shoulder to shoulder when we're in the car. It's interesting that you right? say that because yeah. that's when I get the most information right out of him is, you know, is sitting next to him in the car. Yeah. And I, and a lot of times, right. You don't even start it. He starts it. And yes. then, you have to just know when to when is appropriate to step in and ask a question about ask it question. or what the question is, and mm -hmm. um, and it it's it you get more than you ever would think, right? right. Um, but that's so interesting you say that because that would be spot on. And my daughter needs to come up to me and have you know her her you know her all over, and you, can you feel? <laughs> Can you see that I'm sad, mom? You know, and um, that's, you know, it's, it's smothering a little bit. <laughs> like, can we go halfway, halfway right. shoulder to shoulder, halfway yeah. lips to lips? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's, and, that's interesting. Yeah. And I think that's probably why we see people posting like best Pilates instructor ever here, because if you could figure out those people, yeah. the people that walk into our studios, Right, like, right. Yeah, um, right. You have to look at them. You know, I, I can have a person pegged and they're just filled out their paperwork, right? And I yes. already know where this is going to go. And mm -hmm. not, um, not in a bad way, right? But it, right. it helps with the um, presentation, right yeah. how you're going to present and and how yes. this is is gonna go um and that is uh you know jay always says jay grimes 
read that book, uh, Blink, right? By yes. Malcolm Gladwell. Read that book. Read that book. I tell everybody to read that book. And I did read that book. And it's, um, it's at the end of the day, it's trust. It's, it's having something pegged, right, in the blink of an eye. Yes. Right. Rapid cognitive thinking and, mm. you know, going through that that Rolodex. Right. And thin slice it out. Right. They call yes. it. And then, you know, in the blink of the uh, blink of an eye, you have it all set. Are people born with that or are they um, or Jeez. are they not? Right. Or do, can right. you learn it? Can you learn right. it? Right. You know, mm -hmm. I like to think um, I like to think people can. <clears throat> but as I read it. You know, I call him afterwards and I said, I am that. I already know that I am that. I have that. Yes. Um, but I think, I think I was born with it. I, you know, I don't know. But I also think my parents both owned their own businesses growing up. Right. And they threw us into positions that, you know, it was like, oh, gosh, Dad, if you don't call Mrs. Smith back and get, like, I don't want to answer the phone again because Mrs. Mm -hmm. Smith is so angry at you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you just get put, you have to come up quickly, right? You yes. had to come up quickly with an answer. And you knew you were just buying, you know, buying in time. Right. And, right. Uh, you know, it, it, so maybe, maybe that's why. Maybe that has something to do with it. But, right. um but I do know that that does help in, in teaching in more ways than just teaching. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. There's a, a great book by uh, James Maxwell, uh, sorry, uh, John Maxwell, in, uh -huh. in, in his leadership thing. One of his books is called The Talent Plus Person. Okay. And we all have gifts and talents. And then there's certain things that people excel at. They are really elite in certain things. Right. And, and his hypothesis in this book is that those people that are really good at something can be that talent plus person where they're still honing their skills and getting better and creating even more separation. So you can be born with these talents and these gifts, but then at the same time, you start your own business, you hang around people that are making you better and you're sharpening that, that sword, so to speak, and getting better at the thing that you're really naturally a talent at. And you create even more separation, you make yourself even better with that thing. Right, right. And that's, that's, that's interesting. Um, I think, and then why, you know, why did I pick to do that? Or why did, why did you pick, you know, wh what chose, what chose our, our path, right? Um, right? But I do know as a person, I'm always um, seeking, right, more, I'm never satisfied, right? I'm always going to, um, keep going, keep expecting, keep, uh, you know, not searching for something else, but right. making the situation better, right? Yes, making yes. Uh, com not a conversation, but words between, you know, myself to the client, right? How quick can I get them to understand what I'm saying, right? Yes. Um, how can I, how can I clean that up? Right. Yes. The economy and, of words. Yes. And yes. Uh, it's, but that's, you know, again, that's me. I'm all, you know, my brain's just, it's always going, but I think that's Pilates feeds it. Right. And that right. in itself is a gift for all of us. Right. Um, Cause there's a reason all of us aren't sitting behind a desk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> the, um, if we were to take that down just another level, let's talk about, can we talk about your business that you said it was this formerly known as this, like what, mm -hmm. what was the name of it before and what made you transition the it, business to where it is now? The name of it before was um, the Pilates core. Okay. And at the time when I um, went to name it, right. You, it was almost, I wasn't thinking core like core cause we never used that word core. It, I was thinking I, I would, um, I managed, they had put another training studio in the West Loop um, in the city. And so I managed that for like three years for them. And uh, I would, on my drive, right, I would pass this hospital um, and it had, you know, the core center, right? But it was a, um, you know, meaning the brain, like a brain institute, right? Yes, and yes. 
Uh, and then I'd go, oh, the core of the earth, right? Yes, and, yes. Um, you know, my sister was helping me with my logo and she's like, well, you know, the core of the earth, that's like red and yellow and orange and, um, you know, and I'm like, yeah. Uh, so it's, so it became that. And it was, um, it was, I started in a space that was, I don't know, I, it, 400 square feet, which I know you do meters, right? So right. I can't even translate that <laughs> for you. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but two if two yeah. of us were in there at the same time, right, our asses would touch. That's yeah. how small it was, right? And yes. then you had to like close the door to open the chair, right, in the <laughs> office. And, and, but it worked, right? For what it was, right. it worked. And um, I had, uh, there was a space upstairs that opened. And at that time, there were a few teachers, um, you know, graduating out of the program that uh, didn't live far. And it just kind of, I got busy and it just evolved right into what it right. evolved. We moved into a bigger space upstairs and um, I was there for 14 years or something. Ooh, and wow. yeah. <clears throat> so at that point, right, you have a lot of teachers and you have, um, you know, a lot of clients and then you, you watch the decline, right, in 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you, try to, you know, I've never been a class studio. It just, it's not, I had, I had them, I have them, you know, now we're yes. zooming a couple. Um, they were there in the past, but that wasn't the majority of, of the attraction to that yes. space, right? The majority right. of it were clients paying me not to have to go take a class. Right. And, <laughs> and, you know, rightfully so. Um, and so that's kind of what it's been, you know, and the clientele has been 45 to 80, you know, mm -hmm. my, since I was 29 years old. Um, so I think it, it, it did what it was supposed to do in that space. Yes. And then yes. there got to be a time I, um, I was having, a couple um surgeries i have that i carry that BRCA gene um the breast cancer and ovarian cancer uh gene and mm -hmm. i found that out in 2000 like around 2014 so i knew i had had one surgery and i knew i was going to have to undergo more and um it just gave me time to look sit back and look at the business as a whole and go you know, I'm not, I'm not satisfied, right? I mm. can't keep sustaining. I can't keep, I don't want to have to come up with the next idea, right? To keep everything yes. floating. And, and um, I hate sitting behind a computer. I don't want to put another event together. You know, it's mm -hmm. just, um, and, and I thought, how can I change this? And uh, in order to change something, you have to significantly change it. And so right. yeah. I, found a um, smaller space. I took uh, only two teachers with me out of, wow. you know, the, yeah. And it, you know, it, that's again, a tough decision to make. It's, I'm it's sure. Super tough. It's super tough. Yes. But, but again, as the owner, right. I have to be able to, to, you know, I always said there's a fine line between working with, teachers and the relationship and being close and or too yes. close you know they're because i may have to turn around right and mm -hmm. let them go um right and it the was familiarity nothing. is yeah, yeah and it's it's, yeah. it's hard um but i had to i just knew i wasn't going to be able to sustain it i was going to be and i was going to really physically be out right for a while right. um so it's business, you know, you have to go mm -hmm. like it's business. It's a feeling business, but it's, it's, it's still, still business. business and it's still at the end of the day on me. Right. Yes. So I downsized and we moved into a temporary um, space until I found the space that I'm in, um, that you were in. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Before that. And so, um, and everything works out it, you know, all mm. those teachers, uh, they're, you know, 
they worked out and and um the two that came with me are my partners in crime right i trained them and they've yes. done the um uh project return stuff um you know with me and it's uh we're cohesive and it's it's easy you know i don't yes. need to have a desk person because we can all manage ourselves right we're right. big girls and right. it's you know, it, life doesn't always take the path that you think it does, but I think stuff happens for a reason. And so yeah, when I story. met and moved, um, that's when we rebranded. And mm -hmm. uh, that was from my ex-husband. Uh, he said, you know, you've given, you've given a lot, 14 years, like, you know, you did your thing and they can, you know, take, people can say what they want about you. They can take you know, what they want from you. But um, he said, they can't take your name. So if you're going, you know, I would rebrand and I yes. would go Dana's Dancy Pilates. And that was even tough where I thought, you know, I'm so uh, attached it's, to the Pilates core, right? Like, yes, ah. yes. Yeah. But in order to change, you have to make a change. And right. So that's so simple, that's, but it's true. Right? It's, exactly. It's, it's simple, but it's not easy. No. Right, and that's and that's Pilates. Yes. Right. Yeah, it's yes. exactly what Pilates is. It's simple, yeah. but it's not easy. Right. It's just we need to uh, give ourselves permission to to go back to simple because simple is really hard. Yes. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But once you understand it, it is easy. You know. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you, were you vilified in this process at certain points? Um, hmm. yeah. 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 I think so. I, um, hmm. How would I say? I think the reason, well, yeah, the reason why no, I ask no. this is like, as, as a leader, when you make tough decisions mm -hmm. and I, I know like from the Pilates community, like, and you know, being a woman, you're working with your colleagues and everyone's good and everything's warm and fuzzy. You do your lunches together and all that stuff. Uh -huh. And then at some point it has to switch for you to make like a game time decision yeah. that might not be in the popular opinion, but is the best decision for the business. Yeah. And, and then that's not always received well. No, it's not. It, it's, it's not. But again, you know, I'm a pretty open person. And so if, if you need to speak to me, you can speak to me. Right. And I'm, I'm never, um, I'm never, I could have, uh, I, I could have an ick or a dislike, but I'm not, you know, I, I try hard never to get angry because that just gets exhausting. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, you know, I don't wish bad on anyone, you know, it, it, it's yeah. not, it's, it is, it's exhausting. And so, yes. um, I, I was, but at the same time, I knew what I was doing was right. And I really knew everybody was going to be, they were going to be okay, yes. you know? Um, yeah. And it, and it did work out, but, but that's me, right. Going with my gut and I can see, I can yes. see that it's going to, it's going to be okay. But when you, when you react that quickly, yes. that's where it gets, um, that's where it gets cloudy. Right. And, you know, my mom always said, uh, you know, if an angry customer called, right, she'd say, just give, give them 24 hours. All right, we'll call them back in 24 hours, because in 24 hours, this situation is not going to be the same situation. It's going mm -hmm. to be, they have had 24 hours to think about it, you know, because they're reacting nine times out of 10 to something that just happened, right? It's yes. not not the pro it's not what they're complaining about right right it's right. their reaction their reaction to, to it yeah. yeah right this so. is um this dana is like this is real talk when it comes to leadership yeah because it it's always it's not always sexy yeah no right <laughs> <laughs> Not and, but all. I think it, not at all. But I think <laughs> we think, okay, well, I'm going to train a couple of people. I'm really popular. Or I'm going to go out on my own. I'm going to run my own <laughs> studio. It's not, that's not, that is, yeah, no, 
that's not, it's not awesome. <laughs> it shouldn't be your dream to own a studio. It no. should be your dream to be good at what you do, right? And, um, but I know I'm the best person to own it, right? I know none of them that have ever worked for me would argue that. Um, because maybe it's because I don't react right away, right? Yes. Um, I, but, but that may, that gives you this responsibility, right? Of having yes. to be that, that person. That person. Yes. Um, but I don't, you know, this isn't a business where we should have to micromanage so much, right? If, if you do, you know, I, I feel for you. I, that's, you know, this is not, this is not that business, but, um, I also know I have worked for people and I much prefer just being my own boss only for the sheer fact that I can, you know, walk away and go to Canada. Right. Yes. And, and, you know, not have to worry about time off and, and all of that yes. kind of stuff. Um, right. Right. So I think, you know, I think that's a big part of it too. Plus I grew up in a, self-employed atmosphere Entrepreneurial, right? yeah, environment. and so you know yeah. my brother owns his own business my sister owns her own business uh it's just i think that's you learn that and um that's a that's a that's a big it's a big learning tool right that yes. i never took um advantage or i never took advantage of but never realized till i was an adult how much i really did you know how many life yes. lessons i learned by um by them owning their own yeah. Right. You know, and that kind of comes full circle to what we're talking about at the beginning about um, vir teaching virtually versus uh, in-person teaching. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And when I was uh, when I was working at Lifetime, I was like a regional education specialist and I taught the personal trainer. So for Canada, it was, you know, everyone came through my location. I trained trainers and then they went out to their respective locations and stuff. Um, over time, they transitioned to an on-demand system where mm -hmm. instead of it being a live class being taught, it was a, a virtual class. Okay. And, and it was fine. It saves some money. People still pass it and, and, all, and all that stuff. But what people were missing wasn't you know, me talking about the core mission and vision and, and how to train people. They missed my, you know, the side conversations, yeah. me talking about my kids, me talking mm -hmm. about business ownership. I owned a right. business before I came to Lifetime. So those side right. conversations, those things that they say, you know, there's a lot more things that are caught than taught. Yes. You know, when and it, something, it, it go, yeah. the, the eye rolling, right? Yes. And then you right. look back and you go, okay, you know, okay. Did, did I not communicate that well? Or, you know, yes. it's just a smart ass eye roll, um, mm -hmm. you know, but all of that stuff. Yeah. You, yes. Yeah. 100%. And, um, that is something too. We look, go back to our kids, right? And they're, um, you know, I hope they have that opportunity, right? To, you know, be forced to be in a classroom again without, you know, you know, you don't get along with everybody in your class or maybe they're not all your friends, but you are forced to have a relationship with them, yes. right? And right. how to um, how to grow with that, yes. you know? Because, right. They, we need to yeah. learn to navigate those things because that's not real life to just select who you're going to talk to. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, blank, right? <laughs> truly. Truly. Yeah. And uh, you know that's 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 a huge part of learning on a whole, whatever yes. it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, we've uh, we're bouncing all over the place, and I wanted to talk about your the notion of freedom yeah is one of the things that we we're talking about before and and that has so many different layers to it yeah. um but the one that we've been talking about all week really has been the freedom in how we learn and how we teach our pilates yes so the way that you teach men the way that men learn and the way that men perceive pilates Mm -hmm. is one way and you have really unlocked a way of looking at and giving freedom and permission. So can you just talk about that and just your experience with Darren? Yeah, absolutely. Darren. <laughs> Darren, yes. <laughs> he, um, you know, what you have to, I think, start with is recognize that this, you know, like, and I know you've said before, this is a man's 
exercise developed for men. And, you know, when the, when men walk into your studio and they don't even know that Joe was a man, you know, that alone, I give them credit right there. But yes. when they find out he's a man, they're like, oh, are you kidding? Mm -hmm. You know, now I'm going to go tell, you know, Steve at the club. This, right. isn't, this isn't women's work, you know. And, and Is that how the guys sound? Is that <laughs> oh, yeah, I do voices all the time. Are you kidding? Okay. Okay. <laughs> They're all in my head. All right. <laughs> so you, I, so you, it starts with, again, giving yourself permission to have your own opinion about this work. I knew yes. a long time ago, and I would talk to Jay Grimes about this relentlessly. I don't know what it is, Jay, but when a man comes into the studio, they surpass a woman in two seconds. What they accomplish in 10 lessons is not equivalent to what a woman accomplishes in 10 lessons. And so I just started, that was my thought process at the beginning. And, um, and we have, we have, and we still, and we did back in the day, a lot of men w walk in and out of the studio. Um, you, it is not the same. And I don't know if it's because of the work. I don't know if it's because, um, you know, it was just developed for them. But hands down, when you start comparing and put, you know, a man, 10 lessons and a woman, you will see, you will, it is, it will be there. Um, yes. And you, that, I did a whole conference, I remember, in San Diego at um, Chris Robinson's space then. And I had, I said, I want to do all men instructors, right? I want all yes. men teaching the workshops. Um, because I, there is something, there's something. I just, yes. I just, I, I don't know what it is. I still don't know what it is. But mm -hmm. um, I do know this work was made for you guys. Everybody can do it and everybody can take advantage of it but i know it was developed you know developed yes. for you um you i love i love being in a room and teaching teachers they have the freedom to walk out of here and teach however they want to teach if they believe in it the words that are coming out of their mouth. Yes. It is genuine and it, it I don't even have to uh, align with it. But okay. it's it, but if if that is if, really what you believe if they're passionate then about it. You really need to teach that, right? Mm -hmm. And then maybe your thoughts are gonna change, right? It's right. and that's great. They can because mine mine do daily. Um, you just need to give yourself the freedom to do that. You don't have to do this because I'm sitting here preaching it and you're writing it down. Um, yeah. you, you just don't. And so when you look at somebody like Darren, right, I, you know, his background was balanced body or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. he didn't finish. I don't care because <laughs> I'm going to find greatness and fault in all kinds, right? Yes, and, yes. Um, and you have to take, you, you have to, that, that alone right there gave him the freedom to accept me, right? Yes. Instead yes. of going into it, you know, oh God, I'm balanced body trained and she's not. And, it, mm -hmm. and it's, it, you know, really uh, these days, I think everybody, there's, you know, we yeah. could all use a little more Joe. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so, um, so when you look at it that way, I think, you know, he, the, I gave him the freedom, right, to just do what he needed to do, but he needed to accept me first, right? And yes, and um, that's a huge part of it. But men. You know, obviously, we can't teach them the same. You're structurally different, right? Yes. And the pelvis is just different. It's never going to be a woman's pelvis. It just is not. And so, um, but we're all trying to get this balanced skeletal system. Yes. And so, you know, what 
men need a lot of times is is what men need and not yes. what women need and um he you know i don't i haven't even been working with darren that long and you know he posted that picture with his shirt off and i was like all right damn yeah. like <laughs> That was not that many lessons like he but he's mm. doing the work right right he's yes. doing the work he's just right. doing what i'm i'm translating and he's doing it and you know the only way to get better at this work is to just keep doing it yourself and you just do it and you do it and you do it and you do it again and um you have an aha moment once in a while in between yes. there absolutely yeah. And Darren is almost like a, just a parable for every man out there. <laughs> yeah. In the way we're talking, right? Like, yeah, absolutely. You, just, and, you learn and it, you practice it, you apply it. You learn, you practice, yeah. apply, it, and you just rinse and repeat. Absolutely. Because the body will respond fast. Yes. Right? If we go, oh, that woman, she's lordotic, right? So I'm having her do this. And um, then all of a sudden, it's like you're going, oh my gosh, don't do that anymore. Right, because now you're overdoing it, right, and yes. you know it was like you know in the blink of an eye, right? Yes. And yes. so this will this work? It does. It will change you fast. It it's, yes. it it corrects. It does. It's. I stand by that. It is very corrective, and it it will it should be um, always. It, Absolutely. You know, there's the, you should never walk away feeling a bad sore. You should never walk away going, my back hurts. I must be weak there. No, somewhere there was a miscommunication between you and the teacher, or, yes. you know, you were in the wrong position that you should never be in. Mm -hmm. um, I'm and giving you permission it, right? to say, I can't do that too. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't do it that way right? Don't go back and take the lesson again, and then you're going to be sore again. That doesn't yes. make any sense. You get to be in charge of your body. You could say, you know, it just feels so much better if I just do it this way. Yes. You know, but you'd be surprised right. how many teachers will not do that. And right. um, that's, that's, a sh that's, it's sad. That's it's why sad. we need to uh, keep preaching that they get to have their own opinion. They, yes. You know, it was Ramana's opinion. It was Jay's opinion, right? Mm -hmm. Kathy Grant's opinion. Uh, you know, that's that's how, what he taught them. Yes. You know, uh, but that's what he taught them. So right. why should, why we should go a little bit further back to him, mm -hmm. right? That's, and then yeah, for I've our asked that own question opinion. before too. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The um now Black Cat Plies Hamburg asks here, Dana, can you please talk about teaching Joe's mat versus Roman Romana's mat? Um, yes. So um, Romana's mat, and, you know, again, I haven't been in Romana's Pilates. I've been out of it longer than I was in it at this point. Um, but it was, at some point, they changed the order of it. Um, and I don't know why they did. Uh, mm -hmm. They started putting, they started going from neck pull to jackknife, and somewhere in there was this, um, was this change. Okay. And there's a lot, um, there's a lot of filler in that mat. And mm -hmm. um, I know, you know, I can't say for sure, but I, it's, a lot of it was put in for classes, right? And, uh. and taking up time right? When yes. Joe's mat can be done in 15 minutes. Mm. And if you, it, in 15 minutes, you would do that every day if it was just 15 minutes, right? Course, when you break right. down the repetitions and, and what he's doing and we don't have to do, um, you know, we don't have to do all of the leg series because if you do his leg series correctly, Right, you're gonna get exactly yes. what you need. Now, yes. is all that other stuff bad? Absolutely not. Right, mm -hmm. because there, I get it. We have classes, and there needs to be, you know, stuff in there. Right. Um, none of it's doing a disservice, right, right. to to right. do it. But when um, I'll go back to the the teachers that teach with me, this is this was this was a good one. 
I, we were going to start this project and um, I brought in all the information that I have and manuals and all this old, you know, articles from that I've found over the years and all, all this archives. stuff. And I just yeah. said, take, just take this and, you know, read it, do what you need to do with it. And she took the manual that we all had and she said, so I've got a question. And it was just very straightforward. And she said, so here's all of the mat exercises. And she said, there's all these pictures of Joe, 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 Joe. And then you got to the, um, in the stomach series, the single straight leg, the single straight leg, the double straight leg and the crisscross. And she goes, and then there's some guy, some skinny guy taking a picture in these three exercises. Um, and, you know, and in other exercises in there. And she said, well, she goes, what, did anybody ever question why it was like Joe, 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 and then all of a sudden some guy? Some random guy. <laughs> and I, I look and I was like, <laughs> I said, no. I said, because you just didn't question. Right. But, you know, hell if I wouldn't have now, right? And mm -hmm. so... I just started <laughs> laughing and I go like, huh, no, nobody, right. nobody said a word. No and, one asked. No. And, um, it, it's so, it's so very there. Um, so I think that's the, the biggest difference, but again, I have given myself the freedom to, uh, not feel like I have to do all of those exercises in a math class, you know? Yes. Um, and it's, it's not, but that's me, you know, and again, I'm not faulting anybody for teaching, teaching more. And it's not to say, you know, I couldn't teach the full stomach series, right? But I might teach it differently, because I know, you know, I know what Joe's asking, right? Yes. And so uh, right. it might be presented differently. Well, and that's, you know, I think from the days of in personal training for me, too, when I was teaching or as a master trainer for a program, whatever it is, Viper or T-Rex or something, they teach you the, the fundamentals, they teach you the principles, yeah. and then they, they cut you loose to do it, and then we'd be at a point where we're doing exercises, okay, so stop, why did you give that exercise? Yeah. Oh, okay, that makes sense, okay, go on. Yeah. So when we can understand the why, yes. you can really go anywhere once you understand the principles. Correct, correct, and that's, you know, again, that goes into, you know, Pilates is the being the only form of exercise you can implement right into other forms of exercise. Yes. And it's, you know, um, you can, you move with purpose, right? When my yes. clients come in and they say, well, I was, you know, gardening and then my back started to hurt then. And I knew immediately how to get out of it. Yes. That's a win for me, right? That's, Absolutely. That's what I, that's where I find my success because they, knew exactly what they needed to correct, right, in order to to yes. continue. And uh, yes. yeah. That's, uh, you know, and that is a real mature perspective on coaching because a lot of times we train people to be dependent on us yeah. unconsciously, yeah. right? So when we're training people to be independent of us, they actually stay. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> Right, True. which is right. This, is weird, right? Like you think if I give you all the stuff that you could do it on your own and you still come back for more, yeah. that's counterintuitive to saying, well, no, let me just make you depend on me so you stay forever. Exactly. And and isn't that funny, right? Like, yeah. you know, how that works. But again, you know, go back to your kids. That's what we're striving to do, right? Is to, yes. you know, teach Langston where the plates are. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> become independent. Oh, poor, but, you're exposing right. the poor guy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but he, but, you know, to become this independent person so that when they do walk away, you feel good, they feel good, and, yes. you know, and you set them up, you know, we set them For up success. to win. We set the clients up to win, you know, right, we should right. be. Um, Jay always had a, a good, uh, I use this all the time with my clients uh, and a lot of new ones. He would say, when you reach up into a cabinet and pull out the can of corn, why is it called reaching up into the cabinet and pulling down a can of 
corn. But if you reach in a gym, it's called exercise. <laughs> right. Brilliant, right? Yes. Like yeah. you move with purpose. You just mm. move. And if you calculate your motions and, you know, stand the Some. way you should, you're working all the time. All it's the time. a gift. Yeah. That's yeah. the whole notion of mindfulness right there summarized in one statement. Yeah. It's, it's, ama it's amazing. It yes. truly, you know, you could say 50 years ahead of this time. It, no way. I can go in way more. Right. <laughs> way more. Absolutely. 75. Yes. Yes, right. <laughs> yes. That was so fun. And, and you know, and it, we burned through like 53 minutes, I know, first of all. I know, that was so fast. Um, but <laughs> you, the, you're my 75th person, Dana. And you know what's so odd is literally just the other day, I said, you know, Pilates, it's 75% of your brain and your mind and 25% yes. exercise. I just said it the other day. Isn't that funny? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Do you have any closing thoughts? I mean, you dropped such great wisdom on just leadership and managing this, this Pilates business and then just freedom and teaching and stuff. What would be some of your takeaways for those who have been just watching and just and gleaning so much from you so far? Um, I would just say I am giving you all permission, right, to start forming your own opinion. Um, you know, it is important to find your person, right? That is important because if I didn't have the teachers that I had, right, I would have never, um, I would have never, I'd never be what I, the teacher that I am. Yes. Um, if I didn't find Jay, right, I wouldn't have ever thought I could question, right? Mm -hmm. And he allowed me to question. And I, you know, I want to allow teachers to question. I, you have absolute freedom to all the time. Um, and you get to be in charge of your own work because this isn't, this is Joe's work. That's it. It's Joe's work. Everybody else has an opinion. And yes. you, I get to have one and you get to have one. And, you know, we were just, we're just as important, right. In this, in carrying this method on, um, yes. you know, but you have to, you have to give it. You have, you've got to, you have to give because if Jay didn't give to me and my teachers didn't give to me, I would, you know, I wouldn't be able to say what I'm saying and give to yes. others, you know. Yeah, that is brilliant. Good, good, Absolutely good. brilliant. Good, good. Thank good. you so much. You're welcome, Martin. Man. I'm so happy this worked out. Likewise, this is yeah. so good. All right, <laughs> love it. Next All these time late like, night. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we'll get you on that after dark. <laughs> oh, awesome. That's funny. Okay, okay, I'm gonna sign right. you off. Yep. Thanks so much again. You're welcome. All right, have a good one. Thank you so much for joining us today on Core Conversations. This organic platform has been made possible by amazing people like yourself. So if you're a Pilates instructor or a movement specialist of some kind and you want to be a guest, please message me. If you're in some other field and you know the messages just resonate with you, message me. I'd love to have you on. All of our messages connect and for some reason they all help us in this battle. We're all in this game together, so I'd love to hear from you. Let your words be life to someone else. Check out our website, personalvictory.ca. Click the Core Conversations page to see who our upcoming guests are. And I will see you next time on Core Conversations.